This guy left a comment. He's a new listener and he's 60 years old. He's out there on the dating scene again after an almost 40 year marriage. He didn't say if the, his wife died or if they got divorced, just that he's single again, right? So I thought it was interesting because I did a show. He commented under this on a show that I did about, what was this about? Um, about women that are trying to like hold off on doing sex versus doing it right away or something like that. I forget which one. But anyway, he has some interesting insights that he left. So I thought that would be good for you to hear because it really does speak to if you have an, um, a mindset that is not stifled and you have an abundant mindset about dating that you won't tolerate when you're not getting things out of it that you don't want and or women are doing certain behaviors that you actually don't want to accept. So this guy said, hi, coach. I'm a brand new listener of your channel. I'm in my early 60s and just entered the modern dating market a few months ago. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's, you know, I, I very much am a positive guy about dating these days. I think that there are people that are legitimately out there for you to get, but I also understand it can be a crap show. And with more people that are being more self-absorbed and being about I, I, me, me, I understand how it can be a lot harder. And if you were for 40 years, you had, you were like, I'm done. So to come back out here, I, I hopefully you're, you're doing well. And I hope that since you're a new subscriber to my channel, that anything that I'm saying to you can help you out in your journey immensely. Anyway, he says, after almost 40 year marriage, this video was very interesting. It seems to me that the guys who want great hookups as part of the relationship, which I'm assuming is most guys, should avoid women like this who are putting up so many roadblocks to it and shame guys for wanting it. I don't understand why there seems to be so much surprise and disgust towards the normal guys who, oh, this is the video I did about the woman that was trying to warn women about uh, low value guys. And she was saying, you can tell a low value guy because a low value guy is going to take you on a date and not ask you to pay for it. And he's going to volunteer to pick you up from your apartment. And if you say you want to catch an Uber, he'll say, okay, no problem. And he'll be fine with you not giving it. Like he was, she was saying all these things that are like, these are actually positive things. But because she got tricked by a guy that she really liked, initially and then he ended up being a, a d-bag that she was trying to say but you see he was a, he was a low value guy that was using high value guy tricks to get me so therefore if you see these signals then that means that he's actually a a low value guy which which makes no sense right but part of that was he was trying to like be patient on he, like he wanted to hook up and he was trying to like pester her for it and then she got annoyed by that whatever right as if guys shouldn't at least try for a hookup but anyway so so I'm saying, uh, I don't understand why there seems to be so much surprise and disgust towards the normal guys who presumably, quote, just wants to get in my pants or whatever. Women like hookups too, so why the games? And then he says, during my experience dating multiple women from Bumble the past few months, I had a few fun hookups, but mostly I was frustrated at the slow pace that things were progressing sexually. One woman said she likes hooking up, but refuses to just give it away. Like it's some kind of prize that I have to earn. Well, you know, for women, a lot of times they're going to start to treat it that way at some point, because here's the thing. Most women, honestly, in their younger years, they gave it up freely. They didn't get anything from it. So as they get older, they start to think, OK, I know men want this thing, but the men I just gave it to, they ended up being complete trash. Maybe it's because they didn't have to work for it. So I know what I'll do. The next guys that come up my way, I'm going to not just make them wait one or two dates. I'm going to tell them they got to wait like 12 or 10 dates to do it, you know? And that's going to allow me to really find a great guy. I have been a guy that has actually made women wait two or three months to hook up with me because I wanted some more time. And in many cases, those still didn't work out. Whereas I've also had women that I hooked up with like early on that it went to, into a long-term relationship. So the, the idea that I can hold off with my sexual stuff and it's going to work out, it the probability conceivably should be a lot higher, but you have to also factor in, but aside from the hookup part, what other things about the person that's in front of you is going to make this a long-term relationship? Do they have good conflict resolution skills? Are they able to listen? Do they ask me questions about my day and what I'm going into? Are they going to be like weirded out if I try to come to them and God forbid, say I'm upset about something or have feelings about something? And that's why as you as a guy need to also be taking two to three months to vet women properly, whether you're hooking up or not. But you can properly vet a woman and still hook up with her. The point is that women that are being overly stingy or having these rules about, well, I only hook up on the fourth or fifth date and you can't blah, 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 blah. Those tend to be the ones that have like these really hard rules to live by in terms of their dating realm, which means they're not flexible. They're not open to what you may possibly want. And those women, I find, typically don't make good partners. So they should just be out, you know? 
to, so to his point, yeah, he, they're, they're, they're thinking like, oh, if I just make them wait, and they have no idea, it's not about the sex. It's about that they themselves either pick men badly, have a lot of trauma, or just don't know what to do to keep men. And so women need their help with that, but that's not what I do here. So for you, Guy, so then he says, then I stumbled on a woman who doesn't play any sexual games like this. From the start, she made it obvious that she was very attracted to me and just couldn't get enough of me in a physical way. I'm only able to see her for a couple of days, every 10 days or so due to distance. But when we're together, she wants everything I have the energy to give and wants to give everything I can receive. This blew my mind, among other things, <laughs> that such women actually existed. She's a sexual dream, and this has certainly spoiled me, so I'm never going to settle for anything less again. You know what? That's absolutely true. And I'll be real, guys. The first woman that I ever hooked up with, she did all the things. And I say this because it's important because like my my baseline for what should or should not be acceptable for women to do as it pertains to stuff in the bedroom came from that. So as a result of that, any woman I dated where it's like she didn't want to hook up when I wanted to or she wasn't really to initiate hooking up or she would get mad and then not want to hook up. I would just be like, this is not going to work because real talk like because early on, my experience was like positive with somebody that always wanted to do stuff. And regardless of what mood they were in, they're still like, OK, you know, we can still do some stuff or whatever that like that became unacceptable to me. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like women don't try to shame you into thinking, well, if you want if you want to hook up when I don't want to hook up and that's not fair. And how dare you get mad with X, Y and Z. But the reality is there are women that have a high interest in you. They are so willing and so ready to hook up with you at like any given time. You could look at them a certain way, they're ready to do stuff. You could walk into the kitchen and they'll be like, hey, so-and-so, and start wanting to go to town you then. like. But if you haven't had the experience of meeting that kind of woman, it's very easy to believe that they do not exist because you know women have been taught Okay, so like you need to get what you want out of this too. And you know, you need to not worry about what he wants and it's all about you and you do whatever. And realistically, it's like, look, in a relationship, I, I feel like this because women will get on me like, you know, well, how do you want a woman that does it all the time? What if she gets tired of this net? Real talk. As a guy that is in his 40s now, there are times if I'm in a relationship where like I just am like, I'm tired, I don't feel like doing some stuff, but I know that my partner may need it. I'll be like, I got at least five minutes. Like, I, I'm not a hypocrite. I hold myself to the same standard. So I expect the same from the women that I'm dating. I, at the end of the day, we all got five minutes to spare. So if you don't want to do a full-on session with somebody, they can just be like, hey, you know what, babe, I'm kind of tired. I've had a long day. Let's just do a quick makeout and a quick in and out and then be good to go. And some women actually understand that and they do it. But if you run across girls that are like, oh, well, I'm tired and you can't make me, blah, blah, blah. And you've run up to like, two or three women that are like that, then it's very easy to believe that women out there that just want to do it all the time and that are actually harder than you just aren't out there. Guys, they are out there. It may take a little bit more patience. It may take a little bit more vetting, but it's better to get that kind of girl than to get one that's like, well, you know, it, it looks funny outside today, so I don't want to do anything. And those girls exist. And those girls are exhausting to date. Just putting it out there. So I'm glad this guy was able to finally meet somebody and see that, oh, crap, like, if I want some, then she's, she's just always ready. That's great. Now, but also notice what he said, right? He said, this is very important for you guys to think you got to see a girl all the time. You got to text her all the time. He said, I'm only able to see her for a couple of days, every 10 days or so. So they go on a date, spend a couple of days together, have a good time. He does not see her for 10 days straight. And lo and behold, she doesn't forget about him. She still remembers that he exists. She thinks about the good time she has and is looking forward to the next time. This is why I tell you guys, when you first meet a woman and you start dating her, the idea isn't to try to see her every single day or talk to her every single day. Ideally, you're showing her the best time you can when you take her out, and then you're being patient, you're leaving her alone, you're letting her sit back and think about you and miss you and anticipate seeing you again. And as you can see from this guy's example, it works perfectly fine because every time they hook up, he is, she is ready. She is ready to go. There's no questions asked. She's all giddy around him because she misses him. And that's all I'm trying to get you guys to see is that it's perfectly fine to not be in front of somebody all the time. In fact, it's better because that gives them a chance to anticipate seeing you again. So then he says, I discovered her from a subtle clue on her Bumble profile. Oh, this is this is key, guys. So because I haven't even said this stuff before. Right. He said, I discovered her from a subtle clue on her Bumble profile about how much she liked long kisses. This seemed like a covert green flag to me that she was a very sexual person. Isn't that interesting? 
He was able to see, based on this thing she's saying on her profile, that she's probably this kind of person. I hadn't even read that before. Like, hey, if she says, I like very long kisses, that's a very deep layer clue as to like, and I like to do more than kiss, if you know what I mean. So good on him for recognizing that. He says, our chat progressed from a little flirtatious, then covertly sexual, and eventually overtly before we even met. Since this attitude is so much of what I want in a relationship, if we end up parting ways, I'm going to try to vet my next lady for having a similarly strong sexual interest. I'm sure it's a very fine line to walk because even as sexual as my current girlfriend is, she told me she rejected tons of guys who opened with lines like, I love your tits or similar suave approaches. Well, I will tell you exactly why that happened, right? Because here's the thing. I don't want guys to think that women aren't sexual or aren't willing to be sexually flirtatious, even on like dating apps. You know, I've been able to talk to women on dating apps before where, you know, the conversation starts out pretty even keel. And then there's like a little bit of stuff thrown in there here and there. But what I tell you all, all the time, guys, is that women are into passive language. They read subtleties three times more than you as a guy ever will. Where these other guys are losing is they're saying things like, I love your tits. I want to spank your ass. All this other stuff. It's too direct because when he's saying, I love your tits. What she's reading is, I'm all about just your boobs and your butt and all this stuff. And I just want you in that. Well, that, that's it. Because she's reading three times more versus what this guy did, which is he says, it progressed from a little flirtatious, then covertly sexual. It's key here. He was covert, meaning he was throwing out things that give small undertones of something that is sexual. And we're thinking as guys that because it's a little thing, she's not going to grab on. And this is where I want you guys to understand why it's important to know how communication works for women. Because what to you seems like small communication that doesn't seem like a big deal to her, she's going to take what you said and read more into it. So if you were, for example, if you said something like, you know, like, oh yeah, I bet you have like a really nice red dress in the closet there. She's going to be, oh, he sees me as having a red dress to be sexy and oh my God, like something that small she's going to read into. And so this is why it's, it's good to you to learn flirtatious language on top of flirtatious language is playful language to women. Women want the, like the idea of getting with a guy that knows how to speak their language and knows how to be flirtatious and fun with language while at the same time being able to give those sly, subtle hints that again, she's going to read more into, but it's important for her for them to be covert. Because once again, as I said on the show before many, many times, right? A woman's goal is to not look like the town slur. And so she, even if she wanted to, she can't really respond to you saying, you got a great bunch of a set of T's and A's and I can't wait to smash blah, 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 because her responding to that, she's got to go back to her girlfriends later and say, hey, when they ask her, hey, how did you guys get together? She can't say to them, he said I had a nice T and A and I was like, okay, I'll hook up with him because that makes her look like a slur to her friends and family versus her saying, well, you know, I met him online and for, we kind of started at first talking and then he said some really playful things and ha, 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 I was just so enamored. Like that's a more cutesy story and it's one that doesn't make her look like the town slur. So if you learn how to speak that language, you can say things to her that she'll get are sexual, but to her friends and family, she can play it off as like, she had no idea what you're saying. You just said some things and you thought there might be something to it, but maybe not. And you just wanted to see whatever, like, like give her the ability to have plausible deniability about knowing what you are talking about by learning this covert language. If you need help with that, you can join the introvert dating success community today for X amount of dollars per month, and you will get access to all the programs that'll teach you how to do this kind of stuff. In addition to our weekly talks where you can ask me questions and I can answer them for you, including things like, Hey, how do I talk covertly to girls? Very simple, right? But I'm glad that guy left that comment and I hope that you were able to learn much, much more from my channel because all I'm here to do is help you guys out. You the bad boy, but you can't stop, won't stop. You a high earning, high value, high class man. You a high earning, high value, high class man. You a high earning, high value, high class man. You a high class man. You a high class man. You a high earning, high value, high class man. You a high.